crafty family it's me and today we are going to paint some feathers last time we painted feathers we did it on the jelly plate if you remember this time we are going to hand paint them um, rather than do it on the jelly plate we're going to paint them just with a paintbrush and show you that you don't need a jelly plate to paint your feathers so let's get started shall we um I need to find my black paint. Let's see. Let's do some fun colors. All you need is these are white goose feathers. I'll actually put a link to where you can get them on Amazon. Um so that you can get them. And what I'm gonna do is do like Do like a little chevroni pattern. And it doesn't have to be complete perfection. That's good enough. Actually, I can probably go out to there like that. Very good. I'm just going to keep this rag on hand. And then let's see. Now we can take a little black. Clean our brush off. Actually, I probably should use a better brush like this one, which will help me. It should help me. And now I'm going to do the same type of kind of design the jelly plate was more of a loosey-goosey style of painting whereas this is a little bit more where you're actually painting a sort of design on the feather which is also a lot of fun Bottle's cute. And then let's do some a purple. Purple? Purple. We'll do some purple. I should drag you in just a little bit more. It might be a little helpful as long as I can stay on camera. You know what I'm saying? Let's see if that's possible. feather bits where they belong. I'm not a good painter, so if I can do this, you can do this. I promise. It's not hard. I mean, you can't, you know, go straight and you got to kind of go with the grain of the, the feather, kind of. But once you get the hang of it, it's not bad. Pretty, pretty. And I just dropped some paint on the floor. Not an open bottle or anything. Now, you can, oh, I don't need to open that. Duh. You can go back to your first color. And start again. I got to get this to lay down flat somehow. Very 
Nice, very nice. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're doing blue and black and purple on this one. Sorry if my phalanges get in the way of viewing when I do this sometimes. You hear a noise in the background, it's my fan. Trying to get my feather bits to stay a little straighter. Because as you get down towards the bottom, it gets a little bit harder to do. Not impossible, just a little harder. Because the, the feather bits are like a little looser down here, loosey-goosey. Kind of relaxing to do though. I think the remaining of the bottom of the feather I am going to paint just probably all dark blue. Since as you get down here, it gets us a little harder to to paint. Need a little more dark blue. It's just a little harder to paint with any kind of precision. Am I off camera? Sorry. You never want to go this way when you're painting, or this way on this side. You always want to go away from the center as you're painting, because otherwise you're likely going to mess up your feather even more. And when you get down to here, it's a little hard to get these to kind of be, they're kind of like doing your eyelashes, you know, like when you put mascara on and it kind of clumps. That's just what's going to happen there. And then you can finish by painting the rest of it. Maybe add a little bit of this purple in just for ahas and fun funs and who's a what's it's. And then if you want to make it look nice, you could take your black and just go up just the center here. which I need a smaller brush to even consider doing that because yeah, it gets tiny. I guess then you can go all the way down really if you don't want it to be blue and you want it to match all the way down then Go all the way down with the black if you want. So now I'm going to move that over there for a second. I'm going to get a baby wipe and clean up my mess. And then we're going to dry it. Actually, we'll let that one dry. And as that one's drying, we'll paint another one as that one's drying. We'll just go right ahead and paint us another. Paint us another one. We'll do some pink and some orange and some yellow this time. How does that sound? Does that sound good? It sounds good to me. Let's start with hot pink. Let's remember to mix these up. Let's do, yeah, let's do the same design. I like that design. What can I say? A 
it's pretty. And then we will do the apricot or tropical orange. No, that's not the one I wanted really. That's okay. We'll, we'll use it. It'll be fine. It'll give the feathers a tropical look. So we'll use this color. Very pretty. Very pretty. And then we use the yellow. To the pink back to the pink oh i got some pink in the bottom there because that was sticking sticking my feather in it the feathers like to soak up a lot of paint i'll tell you that much it doesn't go far You'll load your brush up and then start going and all of a sudden you'll be like, hey, I need more paint. And you really can't like scrub, scrub the paint on there because it'll wreck the feather. You kind of got to place it on there gently. These are like, I guess you can consider these like a boho painted feather, sort of. Because, yeah, they're more boho, I guess, than anything else. So you can even do that and leave a white mark if you want. I'm not going to do that, but you can do that. You can leave parts of it white. That would be kind of nice. You're never going to get your feather to stay perfect. I'll tell you that. It's not going to happen. Okay. It's not meant to happen that way, my friends. Okay. Let's do back to pink. Not easy being cheesy. back to the orangey color. And the last section will be a little yellow. Yellow. And if I took one of these and kind of went in here and separated the Separated these eyelashes. Maybe they would dry a little better. I don't know. Probably not. Okay. Let me clean my brush. There's one little section I need to fix. I'm just going to dip my brush in some of this pink and fix this little section right in there. Can you see? Okay, so we've got two feathers, two feathers. Mm -hmm. All right, where'd my baby wipe go? Because two feathers and a big mess. A big messy baby wipe. Oh, let's see, is it purdy? Oh, kind of, yeah. We can save that one. Okay. I'm going to take a this. <laughs> a this. And I am going to dry them. All right. It's pretty dry. Okie dokie. Clean that off. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to get a paint pen. If I can 
get one without making a big mess over here. Should have gotten one out earlier. These are all the white paint pens I have. We're going to find one that works really well. Hopefully. Hopefully. We're going to find one that works. I'm going to test it out on there. And hope for the best. I don't know if I have a good working one. Otherwise, I'm going to have to use a paintbrush. And that's going to be a pain for me since I'm not a good painter. Whoa, that's working, but... It might work okay. Let's give that a try. Let's do... Oh yeah, that works. We are going to do some little drawing on our feather and put little doohickeys and lines and such and screw it up as well because it's hard to, oh man did I screw that up no Now well, the paint won't come out. It either comes out too much. I don't care for these these paint pens. None of these ever work right. And they like I don't know. First of all, I don't care for this bullet tip or what is this chisel tip? I don't care for the chisel tip at all for a paint marker. But these aren't the best. I wish I had good paint markers. I would like. I, are the Molotov paint markers any good? Like, what's good paint markers? Does anybody know? I hear conflicting things about paint markers. I would really just like to have a really good white paint marker and a really good black paint marker. That would be nice, if nothing else. But I don't know which ones are good. It dries up and then it leaks all over and it's like such a waste. I can't stand things like that. I don't like when things waste. That's very annoying to me. Very, very annoying. You guys know I hate to waste. So here I am dipping my tip into the <laughs> into the pool of paint that I have going on. just so I don't waste the paint. I think it looks pretty. It looks pretty. I love it. I think it looks pretty and considering Considering all the trouble I had with this paint marker, I think I did pretty good. Considering. Okay, I'm not going to do it anymore because of the pain in the butt that it is to do it. I just keep dipping the tip into that puddle because there's quite a puddle there. There's got to be a pain in the butt. They need to come up with a special ink that is really opaque but flows like a paint, kind of. Flows like a paint but you know, doesn't leak, it doesn't get all gross. 
Know what I mean? Know what I mean? This gets ruined. I don't know why. It just leaks out again, so. It's probably all I'm going to get because down here I'm going to get end up getting messy again. And let's see. Let's do... Pokey dots, as long as I can hold the flat feather flat. And, oh, I'm sticking my hand in it. I need to be a little more careful. Not to stick your hands in the white bits. Pretty colorful, folks. Pretty colorful. And on this one, we will just do some stripeds. And that's it for that one, I think. Because it starts getting a little too wispy down at the bottom. But you get the point. You can do all different designs. You don't just have to do the designs that I'm doing. You can choose to do just stripes or whatever. I seem to like the designs that go on an angle like that just because they really accentuate the fact that it's a feather kind of, you know what I mean? So yeah, cute, cute. So I hope you'll give this a try. I'm not gonna waste your time doing any more because I think you've seen enough um, to get the gist of what I'm doing. But yeah, and you could do the same things you could do with the other painted feathers we did. You can make them into little tassels. You can use them on your projects. They'd be cute to use to put in like a journal book or, you know, however you want to do it. I just think they're a lot of fun and they're really cute. You can use them in your decor. You can make a whole bunch of them and stick them in like a little jar, you know, and have them as decoration. They'd be really cute. You could turn them into pens by taking some um, like that floral tape and wrapping it around like... Let's say this is a pen, wrapping it around a pen and having it, you know, maybe a shorter pen, you know, doing something like that, all kinds of things you can think of. I just think they're a lot of fun. They're really pretty. You can have just a couple of them laying like on a coffee table or a side table or, you know, use your imagination. That's what you could do with these. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Also, if you're not subscribed to my channel, you should subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. I've noticed that most people that watch my videos aren't even subscribed. So take a second, hit that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And it just takes a second to do so and I'd really appreciate it. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Don't forget that there are links in the description to check out. One of which is my Facebook group, which you can join for free and come hang out and share your art and get all kinds of ideas for different types of art. And we have challenges every month. And also there's a link to my Patreon, which is a way you can support my channel. So check both of those out if you wouldn't mind. And also there will be links in the description on where you can buy some feathers and some paint and whatnot and everything you need to make these adorable painted feathers. So I hope you will give it a try and check out the links in the description. Um, have a great rest of your week. Make sure you do what you love and love what you do and be nice to people. And I will talk to you later. Bye. Mm -hmm.